Okay, so now we have a sense of what a function is, what they look like, how to graph them, how to manipulate them, even the notation for how to represent them. What I want to start thinking about now is really what's the algebra of functions? How do you combine them? And there are a couple of ways that are just really, really simple. For example, we can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, and we can divide them. Let me just talk about those really fast because I think they're sort of straightforward ideas. Suppose I have two functions. One is f of x equals 2x plus 3. And then we have a different function, let's say g of x equals 4x plus 8. Well, I can actually use these two functions to build a whole bunch of other functions. And well, what would those look like? Well, like, for example, I could add them. So we could look at the sum of these two functions, which some people write this way, f plus g of x. That's just notation, by the way. Don't let that bother you. That just means the function f plus g of x. Still depends upon x, but I'm calling it f plus g. If you don't like that notation, then forget it. Anyway. Well, what would it equal? Well, you would just add these functions. And, and we already talked about how to add algebraic expressions. You add the like terms. I have 2x and I put in 4x. That would be then uh, 6x. And 8 and 3, 8, 9, 10, 11 is plus 11. So there's a new function I made just by taking these two functions and combining them, in this case, combining it with addition. You can imagine a similar kind of thing with subtraction, where you subtract the functions. Multiplying them, sometimes people write it this way, f times g of x. And it just means the product of those two things. And you can then actually foil that out if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but if you want to, this would be, let's see, 16, 16, and 12 would be what? That would be 26, 7, 8, 28. And the last times the last is 24. So here's a new function I built. And I built this new function by taking these two other functions and combining them in a way using multiplication. Again, not a big deal. You can imagine dividing them. You'll never believe the symbol for that. It's f divided by g of x. And that would just be the quotient, 2x plus 3 divided by 4x plus 8. Now, there is a little word of caution I'd like to give you with respect to dividing two functions. If you divide two functions, there's a little danger, there's a little teeny danger of actually having a change in the domain. Because remember, functions are only defined when you can think of the values of x that can be plugged in to produce numbers. Well, if you have these two functions, for example, notice that the domain of each of these functions are all the reals. Because I could take any number, multiply by 2, add 3. I could take any number, multiply by 4, add 8. Not a problem. But once I divide them, once I have a denominator, there's a potential for the denominator to be 0. So in fact, the domain of this function, the quotient of these two things, actually is a little different. Because where does the bottom equal 0? It actually equals 0 if x equals negative 2. So in fact, the domain will change sometimes when you divide. And in this case, the domain of the quotient will be all the real numbers except x equals negative 2, because x equals negative 2 can't be plugged in here. Not allowed, because I have a 0 in the denominator. OK, well, so these are some common ways of combining things. There's adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing functions, just like you do with regular numbers. But it turns out there's a neat thing you can do with functions that you just can't do with regular numbers. I want to tell you about that. But before I do that, what I want to do is try to inspire this. So let's take a look at two examples. And well, in fact, before I even do that, let me tell you something else. Let me just do one more thing. In fact, this is a good idea. In fact, you know, sometimes you just start thinking of these things on the fly. Let's take a look at these two functions right here. How about x squared minus 1 for f, and then g will be x plus 2, all squared. What happens, for example, if I were to divide these things? Let's say I were to look at g divided by f of x. What would that look like? Well, if I were to take the quotient, I have to put the g on the top now. And then I divide that by the f. Now, that's a parabola, so that's defined everywhere. And this is also a parabola. That's defined everywhere. In fact, this is just a regular parabola that shifted two units to the left, if you think about it. But when I take their quotients, all of a sudden, this is not defined everywhere. The domain for this one, the domain here, is going to be all the real numbers except 
for when the bottom is zero. And if, if you just say x equals 1, then actually you have to be careful because there's another root. It's plus or minus 1. So you have to avoid both of those things. So you see, when you take a quotient, you really have to be careful of the domain. That's really important. Whereas if I were to add or subtract or even multiply these things, the domain really probably is not in harm's way. OK, so anyway, there's another example to really illustrate that.